Hi there, I'm Linda Gerardo, uh, Biological Sciences from Tacoma Park. I'm also the Early College Honors Co-Coordinator with Professor Wheatley over there. Um, I'd like to introduce my student, Daniel Chin. Daniel is a second year uh, Biological Sciences Early College student at Germantown. Um, he's going to start his talk with a little overview of how CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing works and then go into more of the specifics of his own project. Daniel? Good afternoon, everyone. My name, is, my name is Daniel Chen, and I am an early college student at Montgomery College. And um, thank you, uh, Dr. Gerardo, for the introduction. So first, I'm going to go over an overview or introduction of what CRISPR-Cas9 editing is. Um, CRISPR can be used to change genotypes and phenotypes. Um, and for those who don't know what phenotypes are, they are basically physical characteristics that can be inherited, um, such as your eye color and your hair color. And so this can be done in almost any species. As you can see in this diagram, the LAX-Z species, its wild type allele is blue. But after using CRISPR, we got it to change to white. And we actually got to do this in the lab, which was very fascinating. Uh, how is CRISPR used to edit genes? Around 2012, researchers discovered that a single guide RNA could be designed to direct a Cas9, Cas nuclease to specifically cut almost any unique DNA sequence in a living cell. This is accurately represented in this diagram right here. This is the Cas9. Um, and then the single guide RNA basically guides the Cas9 to a PM sequence, which tells the single guide RNA where to cut on the unique strand of DNA. And then over here, we also have some single guide RNA components. Now, what is a PAM? PAM stands for protospacer adjacent motif. And it is basically a three length nucleotide sequence. Um, and I just said previous, on a previous slide that it directs the Cas9 to where, uh, the, to where it should cut. And so here are the possible PAM sequences. How can CRISPR be used to change a genotype after the target is cut? There are two ways uh, for gene disruption, and that is through non-homologous and joining as the first, and it could also be called NHEJ. And so basically how non-homologous and joining works is that basically after the DNA is, the DNA is cut, the cell repairs uh, the break by itself using its repaired machinery. And so this is not as precise as the other one I'm about to mention because it, it heavily relies on um, the cell. And so the second one is homology-directed repair, where scientists and researchers can more easily customize the repair template and edit it to their liking. So it is a more precise way of uh, repairing the target after it is cut. Now I'm going to move on to what I researched over the summer, as well as the methods I used, results, and future applications. And then I'm going to go on to how CRISPR can be used to edit genes uh, ex vivo for later infusion and transplant into humans. So first, what I researched over the summer, and why did I choose this topic? I chose this topic uh, based off of my family history, as well as uh, inspiration from a documentary um, on Jim Allison, who won the Nobel Peace Prize in 2019 for discovering CAR T cells, which is uh, a cancer immunotherapy uh, treatment strategy. And so over the summer, I researched how CRISPR could be used to design a single guide RNA to target a CTLA-4 gene on a CAR T cell. Um, and so this is all for a treatment for lung cancer. And uh, it can be kind of shown here in this diagram, but I'll talk more about that later. So first, what is CTLA-4 gene? The CTLA-4 gene is basically a inhibitory checkpoint in T cells. But what are T cells? T cells are a type of defense mechanism that the immune system uses to fight off against infectious diseases and cancers. And so they basically contain C uh, inhibitory checkpoints such as CTLA-4 and PD-1, which act as off switches to prevent the T cells from killing normal cells. And so basically during cancer, um, uh, the T cell becomes exhausted and then this causes the inhibitory checkpoints to become co-expressed. And so this causes the T cell function to become disabled during cancer. 
And so this is why I researched about CAR T cells. CAR T cells are basically T cells that are uh, edited to have a receptor that, are, that is programmed to target a specific region or receptor on a cancer cell. In this diagram right here, the EGFRV3 is, the, is a tumor-specific mutation that acts as a receptor on the cancer cell, and this right here is the CAR T cell. So basically, it goes into the lungs, and then, it, and then the CAR T cell's receptor recognizes this the EGFRV3 receptor and attacks it. And so not only does this make T cells more effective, but it also prevents them from killing normal cells. I also used uh, green fluorescent protein, also known as GFP, as a tracker protein to track the efficacy, lifespan, and safety of these uh, newly edit edited cells. And then um, for future experiments, uh, we plan to compare these results to that of normal T cells. So here are some bioinformatic tools I used. I used ChopChop, NCBI BlastN, UCSC Genome Browser, and Horizon to complete these objectives, and I'll go over them um, in more detail in the next following slides. So first, uh, I used ChopChop Browser to find a sufficient target sequence on the exon 1 of the CTLA4 gene, and the reason why I wanted to find it on the exon 1 the exon 1 of the CTLA4 gene is because I wanted to knock out the CTLA4 gene um, as soon as possible. And so this is the target sequence I found, and this can also be represented uh, on this in the screen box in between the purple or pink uh, lines as a more better representation. And so using this target sequence, I wanted to test uh, whether the chosen sgRNA uh, targets the CTLA-4 gene or the equivalent, and whether irrelevant genes were hit. And so the reason why this is important, and to, why it is important to consider these off-target hits, is because off-target hits could cause genotoxic effects such as cancer, which is what we're trying to get rid of, as well as it could cause accidental hits on vital coding regions. And so these are the results. And so at first glance, the table might look very confusing, but basically the E values, um, E values represent how good the hit is. And basically, the lower the E value, the better the hit. And so the E value for when the CTLA-4 gene or the equivalent was hit, it was very low, which means that it had a statistically better hit, whereas the E value for off-target hits, they were very high in, compared, in comparison to the CTLA-4 gene or the equivalent. We also looked at the identities of the CTLA-4 gene or the equivalent that were hit, as well as the identities of off-target uh, that were hit. And so um, the off targets were significantly lower than the uh, than when CTLA-4 gene was hit. So from these results, we concluded that um, the sgRNA statistically had a better hit on the CTLA-4 gene or the equivalent, and the top off target hits were concluded to not be biologically significant. Moving on, I used the UCSC genome browser to find a homology arm sequence. The highlighted portion is the uh, single guide RNA target sequence, and the non highlighted region um, on the left and right side of the highlighted portion is the homology arm sequence. I use Horizon to find a GFP insertion location. And so we decided to insert GFP right before the start codon. And why, you might ask, should we insert it right before the start codon? Well, our main goal is to knock out CTLA-4, but we thought that it would be more efficient to uh, knock out CTLA-4 and insert GFP at the same time. So this is it right here. And then ATG is a start codon, and then M stands for methionine, because ATG goes for methionine. And then I also used Horizon to design a PCR strategy to confirm successful CRISPR editing. So uh, using CRISPR, we got the primer pairs, the forward one and uh, forward forward one and reverse one and forward two and reverse two. And so this can be better shown in this diagram. Um, so after the experiment, we should check um, using the uh, primer pairs. Uh, forward one and reverse one should be 502 base pairs long, and forward two and reverse two should be 770 base pairs long. And so these results would need to be consistent with the results we get from the experiment in order to confirm that the editing was successful. So here are some future applications. 
for the research I did over the summer. So using the research, we could examine the lifespan, efficacy, and safety of the edited CTLA-4 minus GFP CAR T cells, which are basically the cells I created in the, over the summer, or theoretically created over the summer. And then we would use those results and compare that to that of CTLA-4 plus cells in xenografted mice. And what are xenografted mice, you might ask? They are basically mice that are injected with humor tumor cells. Um, and so the reason why I wanted to put in mice is so that uh, we can test the safety before actually putting into a real human. And then we could also use the research um, to create a general strategy for a treatment for cancer. Um, the treatment that I came up with, or Dr. Gerard and I came up with over the summer, is very versatile, as the only thing that you would have to change is uh, what the CAR T cell targets on uh, the cancer cell. And lastly, I'll go over the applications of CRISPR to be used to edit genes ex vivo for later infusion or transplant into humans. Ex vivo uh, editing basically means cells edited outside of the patient. So the advantages to this is first, the safety. Um, if it's taken outside the patient, it can more, we can isolate the gene more and then also control the variables better, which brings us to control. Um, it's more feasible as well. And um, it also provides us with a off the shelf kind of technique where it allows researchers and scientists to um, have greater, uh, greater convenience and accessibility to these um, edited cells. However, th there are also challenges, such as survival and retention rate, which were shown to be low in um, some previous trials, as well as the supply because um, the edited cells are very specific and specialized for each patient, so that may affect the supply, and therefore it will affect the versatility because um, the cells won't be able to, because the cells are very specific to the patient. And so finally, applications. Uh, general applications include cancer immunotherapy and gene disruption. And that brings us to an end. Thank you for listening to my presentation. Wait. And then I would like to acknowledge Dr. Drada for her expertise and support and her guidance over the summer, um, as well as my family and friends for their support. And uh, the honors program at MC and the early college program for making this possible. Thank you.